Okay, thank you so much. Hi guys, hi everyone. I'm happy with us after having a nice time um, uh, with the entertainment. I hope you enjoyed it. This is our second session uh, for the elementary uh, school teachers. With us today, we have five presenters and Howie. Our five presenters are Tali Brunel, Leah Mirashvili, Ronit Glisser, Marlene Saban, and Ilana Sandberg. So guys, We'll start with Tali. Tali, are you ready, my darling? I am. Okay, so please okay. start. We're with you. The floor is okay. yours. Okay. Hi. Um, so I'm uh, Tali Brunner. Some of you met me in the previous session, I guess. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, boosting motivation through drama. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, pictures because it was taken uh, during the break. I'm going to get back to it later. Um, so I really recommend to use drama as a routine part of the regular curriculum in class every week, every day, every Sunday. Um, I think using costumes and puppets in the, as a class routine improves speaking and reading confidence. And it, pupils will feel more comfortable to make mistakes if they're wearing a costume or operating a puppet. Um, now, it's very important to remember that to, to set the boundaries for work with costumes and puppets. Um, you don't want to get the kids uh, running around the classroom in their costumes because they're not themselves anymore or fighting with the puppets because it's not them fighting. Um, and uh, here's an example of um, post reading activity. I took some scripts, some text from Hey, a uh, Hey uh, workbook um, from Eric Cohen books, and I adapted them into a very easily adapted them into short plays. And then we did some puppet shows and some uh, plays on stage with costumes, and the pupils were really enthusiastic to actually read the text and understand it and pronounce it properly. Obviously, they were practicing uh, in class, and it, that was a very good um, activity. Um, another thing that I've done is uh, producing a, a movie based on a book. I did this uh, for two different books, one during lockdown down and one in class, um, but the same, it was a, it was a similar process. Um, I read the book to the pupils. It was, this is a Osborne, a young reader book. It's a high level book. I did this with fifth grade. Um, so they listened to the book they, and then I gave them the script and they practiced in class. I use a lot of recordings for, the, for this work. Uh, so they get a tablet with the recording of the script. So they pronounce it correctly. And then we filmed it. Some, one of them, we used a green screen and one we went out to the playground to film and that was great fun. Um, another example is using uh, Julia Donaldson books uh, for drama in the classroom. Uh, Julia Donaldson is one of my favorite, is my favorite children's author. I think one of the benefits of using her books in classroom is that um, the, the children are familiar with the books in Hebrew. They've been translated and they work with them and they've read them as younger children. And I've adapted, I've, I've, I've adapted plays from these three books. Um, if you have the presentation, you can click on the link and you'll get the play script. And I've done this with my third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, any class it works, any age it works. And uh, we also made a, a short film for, of the Graffalo. And uh, now for my, uh, my baby, which is a full scale theater production in English. Um, I'm happy, happy enough that uh, at my school, we have uh, uh, English theater as part of Talan, as part of the extracurriculum program. Um, so every every term I um, choose a movie and it's usually a play based on a movie. I did the several productions uh, recently that I'm quite proud of. Um, uh, the scripts are here in the links. Um, some of them I wrote myself and some of them I adapted from the amazing, amazing Mitzi Geffen. I'm not sure if she's here. Or if, uh, um, she's a retired English teacher who's done some amazing uh, work in Beersheba. So thank you, Mitzi. Uh, I'll show you some samples from the plays and from the from the movies that I that I made. Um, it's possible to travel around the world in 80 days. I'm going to save them and then I'm going to fight you. Hey, Poppins, I'm extremely disappointed in you. Taking these children jump through picture. Fancy seeing you here, Professor Mingonagal. How did you know that it was me? When I called your name, you would put the headphone and sit on the stage. Got a ticket number three, and it's all mine. I'm good to school, and I love your chocolate. I meet the boy. Oh my God, that's about me. Um. So uh, now I want to talk a little bit 
about the keys to success. Um, how, how did we, um, you can see a picture of a very, very happy teacher here and some very happy pupils. And uh, how did we reach a situation where uh, the kids are, are learning the script in the break? Um, so first, I think that the pupils are active when they're, when they're doing drama, they're active. Um, they have a clear goal, which to achieve, they cannot cut corners. This is a real, really crucial point because when they're performing on stage, they really have to know the script. They have to understand it and they have to read it correctly. It's not like a test in class or like any other assignment that you can give them. They really cannot cut corners. They cannot copy from the neighbor. It's a very important uh, point. Um, enjoyment, I really enjoy it and they can tell and I invest time in it and I love it and, the, and it rubs off on them and they also enjoy it. Uh, also uh, learning outside of the box and outside of the classroom, we go outside of the school a lot for our filming and, um, and that also contributes to the success. Uh, that's it guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Tali, for this inspiring presentation. Please stop sharing, thank you. We have Leah next. Leah, are you ready? Yes, yes, I'm here. Great, share with us. Uh, my name is Leah Mirilashvili. I am an English teacher in fourth and fifth grades. Uh, I'm an English co coordinator, English counselor in Petah Tikva. In joint with another teacher, I prepared a project called Nice to Meet You. And uh, I really had three objectives while preparing this project. To bring together pupils from secular and state religious schools while getting them exposed to similarities and distinctions between those two backgrounds. I really tried to integrate innovative technological tools in remote teaching. And I tried to boost up students' motivation to learn English in a collaborative way. Regarding our participants, we had six graders from both schools and our project consisted of six uh, Zoom sessions. In our first lesson, students related to the questions provided in word wall, and I'm talking about the questions like, what's your favorite food? Do you have siblings? Do you have some hobbies? What kind of hobbies do you have? And so on. And on Padlet, students came up with their um, fact files, where the teachers came up with our fact files as well. So they uh, were enabled to make use of our pattern, given pattern, and even expanded them more. And I have to emphasize that most of the pupils expanded and provided a lot of details in their fact files. In the second lesson, the students brainstormed their daily school activities on answer garden and where the teachers came up with presentation, including uh, target vocabulary and pictures which displayed distinctions between daily school routines in both schools. Students learned the target vocabulary band of the uh, towards the next lesson. In the third lesson, participants played the game called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And uh, the questions uh, were focused on daily routines in both schools. So students were supposed to make use of their previous knowledge they purchased in previous lessons. Uh, afterwards, they were divided into breakout rooms and played the game um, on learning apps. In their fourth lesson, students were exposed to the vocabulary connected to after-school activities on Nearport. The students uh, chose the image and filled in the missing words uh, and also played the game about the after-school activities on climb the mountains. In the fifth lesson, the participants presented several sentences in a written form, I mean, about their favorite image, either it was actor or dancer or nearport. Furthermore, they had to, uh, they wrote in more details why they favored for that particular person. And I want to add that while planning this, that project, we quite assumed that uh, when discussing their after school activity, students would devote some time a lot of time to watching their favorite program or listening to their favorite song. That's why that 
topic was quite relevant for them. Afterwards, students answered the multiple choice questions regarding their favorites in singer, actor, and mask, uh, and questionnaire was given on, the ne on Nearpod. On the sixth lesson, students voted for their favorite uh, activity in, Zoom, in all six Zoom sessions after they were given the list of all the activities they fulfilled. And they voted for their favorite activity on Mentimeter. Then on Jamboard, they came up with distinctions, with distinctions and similarities between those two schools. Here it is. And here I came up with all with a list of implemented digital tools during the project. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Leah. It's great. Well done. Well great. done. Um, next is our Ronit. The floor is yours, Ronit. Unmute yourself. Yep. Hi, good evening. I'm Ronit Glise from Nivsko Cholon, but I'm also a counselor in the district of Tel Aviv. Hey, today I would like to present you the Reader Theater and a project uh, which is taking place in Dizendorf School. Now, this school is very dear to me, I have to tell you, because I've seen the, the, the process of growth among the teachers, and uh, actually they're doing quite a, quite, quite a few things, remarkable things. So what is the Reader Theater? Reader theater is all about integrating books and drama into the class. Children pick up books. Ronit, we can't hear you very clearly. I'm sorry. Children pick a book from the library, whatever suits them, and they pick a chapter of the book and they simply act it out while reading it in front of others. They actually become the narrators of the same book. They actually become the stars of the book. Reading aloud a piece of literature enables the listeners to enhance the vocabulary. So this puzzle actually presents you the rationale of this single school. Reader theater is all about expanding the amount of words uh, within the language. Um, after all, we're bound to band one. Also technology. Never hurts. Masa fellows are a very important part of the school. Actually, they have become a part of the family among some of the staff. Uh, they invite them over for Shabbat. They take part in the learning, indoors, outdoors. They're doing quite a few things. So what are the benefits of reader theater? As you can see, to begin with, listening and speaking. The narrator speaks to the audience, the child himself tells the story from the book, he reads it to them, while the other children are listening to him, um, being motivated themselves to present in front of others, which is the benefit itself. Uh, the reading of books becomes more fluent. Children need to practice, practice, practice. By doing so, their vocabulary is expand enormously. Reading comprehension is a very important skill because once they pick a chapter from the book which they want to read it out for the others, they need to make sure that it's meaningful and fully uh, clear to them before they bring it onto stage. So how do we begin the process of having a reader's theater uh, in our school? Here are some tips. We need to make sure that the exact parts that we need to, that the children want to read are highlight. Highlight because they need to make sure that they understand the essence of the story. Okay, and then how to use how to use the dramatic process within the reading itself. They need to know how to hold the script, whether they hold it while standing or sitting or, the, or like bending. Um, 
they need to demonstrate various positions, like being in a real theater. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, I think, is the most important thing because once you practice something, you become more competent and you are able to do things freely. Um, we can also, while saying practice, I mean practice um, in different ways, like practicing alone, individually, or in small groups, or even, you know, making rehearsals in the class itself. Home. What does home have to do with reader theater? Well, actually, it's wise to keep a copy of the of the book at home so that you can, you know, that, so that the child can share the experience with his parents. Once the parents show interest in the in the action of reading aloud, they the child himself becomes more motivated. Short. Short is the length of the primary presentation of the child. If a child wants to read something to his mates, he needs to make sure that he picks a short text to begin with. After he masters this short text, he's able to move to the higher stage. Once again, if a child chooses a text at the beginning, he needs to make sure that he can read it aloud. Practice, practice, practice. Again, reading aloud enables the child to hear himself. Mm -hmm. After a whole process of learning and acting out and reading aloud, Every child has to have a self-reflection process. Did I do well? Could I have done it any differently? So the child has to make sure that he read correctly with the correct pronunciation. Was he heard correctly? Was he heard clearly? Was he able to read in front of the audience? Was he shy? Or was he comfortable enough? Did he read fluently? Did he use the correct necessary pauses? Did he use any props? Did he demonstrate any self-confidence or was he shy and quiet? Here are some pictures just due to have a look. Notice the Massa fellows having fun outdoor as i said before they've become a part of the family see the smile see the practice they're sitting indoors and outdoors enjoying the sun almost like a family okay computer as i said before the computer enables the children not only to read out but also listen to themselves being in front of the public once they do so, they can practice and practice and practice. Okay. The Chatter Picks is an app. We'll need to, oh, we might not have time for that right now. Okay, okay. because we're over six minutes. So I'm sorry. Um, we'll have to just make sure that everybody gets this presentation. I'm sorry I had to stop you. The presentations uh, will the be chat. online. Yes, thank you. yes, that's thank you right. For thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. To thank me. you, Oni. Thank you so much for the wonderful work you're doing with Dizingoff. That was great. We have Marlene now to start. Marlene, are you with us? I'm with you. Can you hear me? Uh, um, yes. Yes, yeah, you can. Yeah. Loud and clear. Okay. Welcome to my session, Postcards from Germany. I'm Marlene Saban, a veteran English teacher at the Hebrew Reality School in Haifa. I'm going to present to you today a joint project with my fellow Vivian from Marian Schooler in Germany. This was a very special project because in all my many years of teaching English, I have never seen the, my pupils so enthusiastic about writing in English. As we all know, writing is one of the more challenging aspects of teaching language, but before I discuss aspects of which I think led to its success, I would like to present three pivotal statements about teaching EFL writing uh, to, to you. So please go into www.menti.com and enter the code 
794-1524 so that you can react. And this is the statement that I'm going to give. How would you rate these statements? If you go into the mentee, you should be able to see the slide. Uh, what is most challenging? It is, is it, it is most challenging to get your students to begin writing. It is most challenging finding engaging topics for writing, or it is most challenging keeping your students on task. Waiting for you guys to vote. Okay, I'm gonna do a 10 second countdown and then the results will come up. Okay. I don't see any of you. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, so mm. what was so special about this project? It was a pen and pencil project, as you see. It was a pen and pencil project, but it also Marlene, uh, we you stuck. It's Marlene who is stuck, right? Not us. You can. The internet's uh, low. Oh, shut. Okay. The goal, as you see, was stimulating writing and EFL through sharing experiences about everyday activities and life in different countries. So these were the, uh, the products, as you can see, very colorful, very much invested in. The children loved getting the postcards and the children in Germany loved receiving them. Okay, so what do you think made this a successful writing project? I've given you um, options out of a hundred percent. If you can all go into the mentee once again, it's the same mentee. You can vote, okay? And you can tell me what you think. Was it Mal fun? Malina? I suggest you put your camera off. Your network bandwidth is very low. And okay. It's taking resources. Okay. Is this better? You can hear me. Yeah. Fine. Okay. So there we go. Okay, that's why it's not working. I can see now. Everybody's giving me a hundred percent of a hundred percent of all of this. It was fun getting the postcards. It was fun corresponding. It was an authentic opportunity. Uh, pupils enjoyed writing without being graded. It was different to, inst to instant online correspondence. All very nice. I'm stopping that because I want to move forward. So what did the children have to say about this writing project? Why did they, why did they so enjoy it? What was so successful? So these are the seven uh, responses I gave them, I sent them a Google form, and these are the responses. They said it was a surprise. 60.9% said it was because it was a surprise. 50.2% uh, said it, be, it was because it was peer interaction. 91% enjoyed the fact that it was international collaboration. 56% said that it was great, it was an opportunity to read. 73.9% said it was an authentic writing task. That's why it was so enjoyable. 60.9% enjoyed the fact that it was snail mail and not electronic mail. And the 69.6% .6 of the participants said they enjoyed the fact that there were no grades involved. So after I turned to, the, to them and I said, okay, so how would you like to carry on the interaction? And I also gave them the option of saying no more interaction, please. We don't enjoy this. I got wonderful responses. As you can see, they wanna meet each other on Zoom. As well as that, they want to carry on corresponding in snail mail. And the interesting thing is that the least of all, they want to write to each other on email. So, the, so what I learned from this is that the postcard, the pen and pencil was the most effective means to get them to write. So I also gave them an open um, question opportunity to write to me why they enjoyed it. And as you can read, they said it was fun. It was special making friends with other kids in Germany. As you can read, I'm just gonna give you one 10 seconds to read their responses. There we go. There's some of the pupils that were involved in the project. Thank you very much for listening. 
and you're very welcome to see my presentation online. Thank you. Marlene, please write in the chat how you found the schools online, people are asking. Yes, people are interested in knowing. We have our last but not least presenter for today, Ilana Sandberg, the floor is yours. Thank you, Daphne. <laughs> All that I'm just going to hide my controls. All right. So whoever is still with me, hi, it's Ilana Sandberg again. Uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about a future readers program that everyone can use to close the gap now in the present. So I'm not going to reintroduce myself. You've seen me, you've heard me, but I want to take us back for two and a half years ago when suddenly the world locked down, COVID. We went into remote learning. And since we've come back and had hybrid learning, we've had long absences between the pupils and the teachers. We've had quarantine and our pupils, as well as us, have suffered greatly. Now I'm sure that like you and myself, a lot of pupils have fallen behind in our schools. What can we do to help them? Well. I have an idea. I have an intervention plan that takes our struggling readers and be, helps them become future readers. And this plan is almost 100% successful. What do I mean by that? Well, you'll have to wait and see. What is this program? I'm not here to sell any books, okay? But I wanna help you counselors, coordinators, and teachers help your pupils to acquire basic reading skills by utilizing your school resources better, okay? This program focuses on the strength of teamwork of all the English staff members. There are, there's no more your pupils, my pupils, all of these pupils are ours. Okay, they're our responsibility. This program focuses on the consistency of learning both in the classroom and outside the classroom. I'll show you how in a minute. And obviously the obligation of both pupils and parents and the ongoing consistent involvement of administration and homeroom teachers. Yes, everyone is involved. It takes a village to raise all these children, right? So after four years of implementation in our school and a success rate that is really unprecedented, I felt that it's time to share it with you. Our success rate at a lone elementary school outside of Jerusalem is close to 100%. As you can see, 99% of our pupils are reading. Only one pupil has not yet conquered his reading skills and that's because he's new and we're helping him out. Our fifth graders, we have only five pupils out of 105 in the entire grade that still have not conquered their reading, but we are helping them. It's the, val the, the importance of the yet, right? And our fourth graders as well, 98% are reading. So how do we start? First and foremost, coordinators, brainstorm with your teachers. Which pupils, which books? which methods, we all have to value our colleagues' opinions and work together as a team. You decide how many hours, but in a minute, I'll give you an idea of how you can do it. And encourage your staff, share and learn together because that is the only way to grow and succeed as a school, as a full English department. So how do we collaborate? How do we efficiently use our school resources? Imagine you're a staff of three teachers. Each of you might have five Palatini hours. That's 15 hours of Palatini that we can dedicate to our English program. Why don't we group our pupils who are struggling readers into grades and have them work together both inside the classroom, which could be four or five lessons per week, and two weekly hours of Palatani. Even if you have six weekly hours of Palatani, you still have nine to dedicate for whatever you need afterwards. What are the steps that we can do? First, collaborating, as I said, as an English staff, then getting the parents and students on board, agreeing to be, to be in this program because that's the only way that we can work. We need their help, right? We need to maximize our hours by learning both in and out of the school and have our staff and administration check in. My principal, God bless his soul, listens to every one of those struggling readers and just compliments him or her, okay? That's what raises motivation. We assess our pupils all the time, check our methods, check our pacing, and together we can make our pupils perfect readers. Now, just a few steps not to overlook very quickly, convincing teachers. Like I said, it takes a village. So we also need our homeroom teachers to help us 
push our students and, and, and have them learn wanting to learn to read. We have to build a schedule and cooperate with our vice principals to find the proper hours so that it's not uh, on art lessons or gym lessons. They need those too, right? And last but not least, the constant involvement of everyone together. They're our pupils, right? So if Henry Ford could say that coming together is the beginning and keeping together is progress, well then working together is success. And now it's time to close the gap we can only do it together. My name is Ilana Sandberg, and I want to take a second just to show my appreciation to the most wonderful staff that I have, my Alone English staff, because without their effort, their hard work, uh, none of this would have been possible, and I wouldn't have been able to be here to show you today. So thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you Ilana. Now, before you all go away, I would like to stir you in the right direction. Right now, after we finish here, you'll go back to the main stage again. So we'll continue from there. I can actually show you how it looks like. We all know, the, um, okay? We all know the, the site, the conference site, okay? So can you see this link over here? You can either go through the main stage or just press on this link here where it says announcements for of the e-talent winners by Howie, not other than Howie. And then after that, you go into the quiz trivia that is very, very special and done through the Eureka world. You see yourself, don't miss it. So please, when you come out of this room, go directly into either through this or the main stage on the site. Thank you very much presenters. You were wonderful, very inspiring. Thank you for your efforts. And thank you everybody for joining us. Have a great rest of the conference. See you later. I'm going to close it here because I have to rush. <laughs> okay, see you there. <laughs>